you're watching this uh, very exclusive conversation with uh, one UN diplomat at the helm of affairs, uh, India's permanent representative to United Nations, Ma'am Ruchira Kambo. Thank you very much for joining uh, and talking to Doordarshan. No, no, my pleasure and my greetings to all viewers in India on a very windy afternoon here in New York. Windy Sunday, pleasant afternoon here in New York and we bring to you, in fact, we're very honoured to bring you uh, this special conversation from the place uh, which seems to be the centre of world attention. We are talking about United Nations uh, headquarters, lawns, which are going to play host to the ninth edition of International Yoga Day where India and the Indian yes. Prime Minister takes the centre stage. Absolutely. First of all, congratulations to you and your team, ma'am. How are the preparations? Tell us no, more about it. Thank you so much. It is indeed a privilege. I think what is really unique about this event is that nine years ago, as you would all know, the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, had envisioned this when under his leadership and vision, you know, 21st June had been declared International Yoga Day. That in itself was a very, very uh, uh, strong message that he sent to the world and 177 countries had co-sponsored that resolution, as you know. So this year, nine years after the resolution was adopted under his leadership, he comes here to lead us in doing yoga. Now, how unique is that? Absolutely. And we must tell our viewers, ma'am, if you could just show our viewers, the very lawns where uh, I understand the preparations are yes, taking place. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So the, these are the prestigious north lawns of the United Nations headquarters by the East River, which is to your right. So a very tranquil and beautiful setting, not to mention the skyline yes. of uh, Manhattan. Yeah. So right there, you can see that uh, the stage is being set up. There is a beautiful bust there of Mahatma Gandhi, yes. which is a gift from India and which proudly adorns the north lawns. And this gift was uh, gifted, if I may say so, in December during our presidency of the Security Council yes. and His Excellency, the Foreign Minister of India, Dr. Jay Shankar, and His Excellency, Dr. Antonio Guterres, yeah, yeah. the Secretary General of the UN, had jointly inaugurated yes. that. I mean, look at the beauty of it. It is definitely historical in the, in the world history, in United Nations history. Perhaps you have the only Prime Minister, and that is the Indian Prime Minister, leading the world in uh, conducting a session underneath the Manhattan skyline where you have Mahatma Gandhiji's bust overlooking the very venue and 180 plus countries participating. Absolutely. I think uh, there is a lot of buzz and excitement. People are looking forward to doing yoga with the Prime Minister. And I think what is very unique is we keep saying yoga is popular, yoga is popular. Of course it is popular, but this year we have added another layer. Mm. In that, the Prime Minister is himself leading the yoga and this in itself is a measure of the popularity of the Prime Minister and also the standing of India as a country. Absolutely. And um, also a bit about the journey. 2014, that's when this happened. And yes. now 2023, when you have the very Indian Prime Minister there yes. taking the centre stage, rather India taking the centre stage at the yes. UN. Well, the, what the global message. Yes. Now. I think uh, in 2014, we had clearly mentioned that uh, yoga is an ancient Indian tradition that belongs to humanity and over the years we have seen that this transcends national borders and it has truly become a global phenomenon and I think this is what everyone's going to see and uh, one very important thing I think I should like to bring out is that sure. yoga is also very much aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals yes, yes. with its emphasis on health and well-being it aligns with uh, goal three mm -hmm. and also go goal four on education yes. and with the emphasis on you know mindfulness being at one with yourself uh, others mm -hmm. and the environment. It mm -hmm. corresponds to SDG goal 12 which mm -hmm. is on responsible consumption and production mm -hmm. and also SDG goal 13 mm -hmm. which is all about the environment and very recently as we all know the Life Initiative, Life Initiative yes. which was uh, the Prime Minister's vision and which was launched in Kevadia in October 2022 in the presence of the UN Secretary General. A lot of that also mm -hmm. is uh, uh, reflected here at the United Nations. Millets? Yes, millets. Yes. Let's not forget it's millets. It's India everywhere. It's <laughs> India at the United Nations, yes. very much so. Yes. India, uh, if I may be allowed to say, has literally taken over UN. I mean, we are going to uh, see, I mean, reportedly, ma'am can tell us more about it, 180 plus countries participating, more than 190 plus or perhaps something around that. Well, I flags. Would, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't put a number to it, but mm -hmm. what I would say is everybody is participating. Yeah. And yes, you talked about the flags. There will be a big burst of color, all the 195 flags. Mm -hmm. 
will be there in the lawns right there. I don't think the camera can see that, but you will see it that day. Mm. So I think that's a very powerful uh, message in terms of multilateralism and India is a very committed multilateralist, a founding member of the United Nations and today a very powerful voice of the Global South. This is something which is going to be hugely reiterated on 21st morning yes. from the very lawns here yes, yes. Uh, where uh, the larger message that goes yes. across considering whatever is happening around yes. the globe. Yes. Yeah? Oh absolutely, I would agree with you and uh, you know the one unique thing is that yoga is uniting all of us. People are here from different nationalities, different uh, cultural backgrounds, yeah. but they have all come together as one, and this is being done through yoga. Tremendous amount of support that India continues to get at the UN uh, level by and large, not only about the International Yoga Day, but otherwise we've seen, would you ma'am agree, that there has been a big shift. Uh, in a way, UN is looking up to India, not looking at India, and the world is looking up to India. Oh, I would agree with that. And I can give you two very recent examples. In uh, March, April, we had fought an election to the UN Statistical Commission. We secured 47 out of 53 votes. And while I will not name countries, what mm -hmm. I can say that the other countries were far, far behind. Okay. And very recently, just last week, a resolution on uh, a, a memorial wall mm -hmm. for fallen peacekeepers, those who have made the supreme sacrifice mm -hmm. in the cause of peace. That resolution, which was an India-driven resolution, secured 190 co-sponsors. Okay. So okay. this is sort of a testament uh, uh, to the faith that yeah. people have in India yeah. in terms of its uh, intent yeah. and in terms of its leadership. Also, uh, the tremendous amount of support, rather the way the Indian diaspora once again is coming together, not only for the fact that the way they're going to welcome yes. Prime Minister Modi. I yeah. mean, uh, we do know that the Washington DC event, the diaspora event is one big ticket event. But even in the IYD event, your diaspora yes. has... Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, the Indian diaspora will be here at the United Nations too. But why I call our event unique is that it has a very strong international component. Yeah. And of course, very much so the Indian diaspora. Indian diaspora. Uh, Ma'am, uh, a bit more about, because since we're talking to you, a bit more about the way India's efforts at the UN uh, peacekeeping missions, you know, they have been hugely lauded. I mean, yes, yes, absolutely. I would say that uh, India's credentials on peacekeeping are very, very strong. Mm -hmm. Since the very onset of peacekeeping in 1948, India has been a major troop contributing and police contributing country. Mm -hmm. Since the inception, we have contributed over 250,000 troops sadly and regrettably mm -hmm. we also have the maximum number of lives lost and that is why India has been very concerned uh, in taking the lead and in fact India takes the lead on all peacekeeping matters yes but we've also taken the lead in terms of a memorial wall to honor the fallen peacekeeper okay. this is the very least that we can do to these brave hearts who have uh, sort of laid down their lives under the blue flag okay in a big first, now this is very unprecedented. I'm going to, I, I started by asking you how this is really going to create history. Final question, ma'am, as India continues to script history at this stage, uh, what is your message to the fellow Indians and especially on the occasion of International Yoga Day where India takes the center stage? Well, as far as uh, my message to uh, fellow Indians here uh, in the US and also back home is concerned, I think Yoga Day is a day of great joy India has taken the lead in inscribing this at the United Nations. It is part of our tradition, our heritage, I would say our glorious heritage. And so therefore, all of you, please do yoga for mind, body and spirit. Well, as they say, well, uh, this uh, ninth edition of the International uh, Yoga Day is going to be led by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Not only something that is going to script history, but this is going to be IYD, the very India way. Thank you very much, ma'am, for talking to Dudas. Such pleasure. a pleasure. All the very Thank best you. To you. Thank, Thank you. you.